I've written over 200 software engineering resumes, and I can say without a doubt, your resume is the reason you don't have your dream software engineering job or internship. And the worst part is, you think it's fine. You've reviewed it a few times, run it through ChatGPT, even showed it to your friends, even your mom. So you think it's good. Wrong. My name's Amon, and back in college, I landed six high paying software engineer internships at companies like Amazon, Shopify, and HP. And after graduation, I secured multiple six figure job offers, all of which were after the software engineer job market crashed. Since then, I've helped hundreds of computer science students and software engineers land internships and full time jobs in the market of today. And I've reviewed hundreds of resumes, but never seen a perfect one. In this video, I'm going to break down the five biggest resume killers that are silently stopping you from landing interviews in tech. And I'm gonna roast multiple of my students' resumes at the same time to show you exactly what I mean and how we fixed it. Now, the first mistake I see with almost every single resume is something you probably did on purpose. And it's something that most people overlook. See, when ordering your resume, you might have ordered your best work halfway down the page because deep down, you thought it didn't count. You told yourself, well, it wasn't a real internship, so you put it down below and hope for the best. The first mistake you're making is that you're not putting your technical experience first. Let me be clear with this. Recruiters are not going to search through your resume and find the best experience for you. If it's not at the top, it doesn't get seen. And if it doesn't get seen, it doesn't exist. And the reason why is simple. It's the halo effect. See, the halo effect is a psychological bias. It's where if we see something good first, we assume the rest is just as strong. If something looks impressive, we treat it as impressive. It's like walking around in a suit. People assume you're legit before you even say a single word. We all tend to judge a book by its cover. And your resume has to take advantage of that. Let me tell you how I personally learned this. See, back in high school, I didn't have any fancy projects. In fact, I sucked at coding. I was literally Googling how do Java methods work and hoping I wouldn't confuse strings and integers. I was that bad. Then I somehow landed what I generously call an internship at a hospital. Now, when you hear internship, you might imagine shadowing an IT team, maybe writing some code or fixing some bugs here and there. Well, that was definitely definitely not the case. Let me tell you what I actually did during that IT internship. I spent the summer dragging broken computers out of a dusty basement and dumping them behind the local hospital. And the guy I was supposed to shadow, he vaped in the car while I coughed through secondhand smoke as a 15 year old. And no, I didn't write a single line of code that entire summer. But that experience was good enough to write IT engineer and internship on my resume with good looking bullets, clean formatting and strategic wording. That one internship helped me land a real one before college even started because it made the rest of my resume look even better. Okay, let's see the halo effect in action with a real resume from one of the students I've worked with. Let's actually go through Vincent's resume and exactly how we broke it down line by line by line to help him land way more interviews. Now, the first thing you'll notice is that when it comes to implementing the halo effect on a resume, the title of your roles in the experience section makes a massive difference. As you can see here, he's titled this position embedded system software intern, which isn't bad. I mean, that's accurate, but we could do so much better. If Vincent is going for software engineering roles, why would we call this an embedded system software intern? Instead, we should just call it software engineering intern. It sounds obvious, but it makes a massive difference. The ATS scanner will often screen for the word software engineer intern. So you just want that somewhere in your resume and why not just put it right at the top? Similarly, hardware slash software intern is not a good title. For the exact same reason, we should just call that software developer intern, full stack developer intern. If Vincent's going for sweet roles, then why shoot himself in the foot by bringing hardware into this? And you're probably thinking, Amon, how can you just name a role whatever you want? That's the secret. Your resume is whatever you want. It's whatever you want to portray. There are no rules as to what you can and can't write. Obviously, you don't want to lie, but you have the creative freedom to change it however you want. And similarly, let's look down here at the project section. Why is the title Sudoku game slash solver? We can do so much better. RPG style video game. These titles make a massive difference because they're bolded too. Recruiters, when they do their seven second scan, they're looking at those titles. Finally, Vincent is either a new grad or a student, which is why his education is at the top. He's at Georgia Tech. So why is our relevant coursework at the bottom? If someone wants to portray themselves as a student, we should put the coursework at the top. The halo effect dictates that whatever people see first, they assume the rest contains, and we want people to see him as a student or a new grad so they have more leniency when it comes to his resume. And this is his resume after we worked on it. Notice how all the positions look way better. Software engineer intern, software product management intern, engineering intern. These are way better titles. He's also reversed the order. She was showing off the actual employer, such as Honeywell International, which is a great company to show off. And finally, we see that relevant coursework, clubs and skills are at the top because they're small enough to not take away from the rest of experience, but they portray the resume the way we want. That's how we apply the halo effect to a resume and it makes a massive difference. Okay, at this point, you've caught the recruiter's eye with something strong. Now it's time to prove it actually mattered. And the only way to do that 
that is with numbers. And that's something most people highly undervalue. Metrics are resume gold. They stand out, build credibility, and show real impact. Think of them like screenshots of your success. Whether you're building an API, fixing a bug, or shipping a feature, there's always a way to quantify what you actually did. Here's a real example from another one of our students that will show you how adding just a few numbers turned forgettable bullets into interview magnets. Take this one. Completed two search-based algorithm projects in Python, degrees of separation, linking two actors in different movies through their mutual friends, and tic-tac-toe, an AI game that would be impossible to beat. Oh yeah, all of that sounds like it might be interesting, but here's the problem. What actually happened? What does that even mean? It doesn't tell me anything. See, there's no metrics, no results. I have no clue whether this is a real world tool or just another random homework assignment. It's a classic mistake, talking like a student, not an engineer. This is basically like saying, I did two things in Python that sounded like CS concepts. That's not enough. So we dug deeper and turns out they did so much more. They actually built a breast first search graph search tool that mapped a thousand plus actor nodes, designed an unbeatable tic-tac-toe AI using Minimax with alpha beta pruning, and benchmarked and optimized performance for lowest possible move count. Now we're talking. So here's how we rewrote that. Built a Python-based actor connection finder using BFS to map a thousand plus nodes, designed unbeatable Minimax tic-tac-toe AI with alpha beta pruning, optimizing for lowest possible move count. Notice the shift? Suddenly it doesn't sound like a forgettable class project, it sounds like something an actual engineer would build. And here's the best part, nothing changed about the project. Honestly, we just told a story in a way that actually lands. And here's the problem, if you skip this, all the hard work you did, it disappears. It's like saying you go to the gym seven days a week, but never actually mentioning how much you lift. Cool story, bro, but no one's impressed until they see the plates you put on the bar. So even if it's a personal project or internship, you need to ask yourself these questions. Did your code improve speed, reliability, or user experience? How many users did you actually impact? What tangible changes occurred because of what you built? Because if you don't include the numbers, you're just another bullet point no one remembers. Still, even numbers can't tell the full story. There's one secret that most people skip and it costs them interviews. Let's talk about something that doesn't get enough attention, but silently ruins resumes every single day. Your formatting. Now I get it, this sounds boring, it's not as flashy as name brand companies or big personal projects, but here's the thing. You can have legit experience, real metrics, and an outstanding story, but if your resume looks bad, it doesn't get read. Period. And I'm not exaggerating this. Here's the thing. Recruiters are not spending hours reading through your resume. They're scanning hundreds and hundreds of them looking for high-level signals that stand out. And if they can't see value in the first five seconds, then they're on to the next one. And if that first glance feels a little off, too cluttered, misaligned dates, sloppy spacing, they move on instantly, no second chances. This isn't theory either. I've seen this happen time and time again. So let me walk you through exactly what that looks like. Using Sharanjit's resume, another one of our Accelerator students. All right, we now have Sharanjit's resume open. As you can see here, this isn't a terrible resume, but there's a lot we can do better. And the main things I want to draw your attention to regarding formatting are the fact that his bullets are taking up multiple lines with one word. So as you can see here, these are just one or two words taking up entire lines in the resume. And it makes the resume look very sparse. As you can see, there's a lot of random white space here that we just really don't need. So that was a massive change we made with him. We filled out tons of those lines. Similarly, we also wanted to play around with the employer and the role name and move those around and see how that looks. Let's take a look at his resume after we worked on it. And here it is right now. As you can see, it looks far more impressive. These lines are fully filled out. And while it can be a lot, that's good because it gives the impression that he has a lot of experience and depth of knowledge. Similarly, we changed the titles and the employer names as well, which make the resume look even better. It's often overlooked, but formatting makes a massive difference. Formatting isn't about making your resume look pretty. In reality, it's about making your work easy to find, easy to read, and easy to trust. See, if your resume feels strong content-wise, but it still isn't landing interviews, take a step back and ask yourself, would I hand this to a senior engineer at Google? Would I be confident handing this to a hiring manager at Netflix? If the answer is, hmm, probably not, then it's not ready. Because here's the thing, if your layout looks lazy, they'll assume your work is too. And in this market, you don't get the benefit of the doubt. So here's what to do next. Clean up the layout, remove any distractions, and I don't want to see Canva templates or any watermarks. Instead, you'll want to stick to a layout that looks like it came out of a Microsoft 2003 document. A software engineer resume with flashy colors, graphics, and drawings is like someone wearing theater or stage makeup. 
Sure, from a distance it looks good, but when you get close up, it just makes you look like a clown. Honestly, simplicity is what makes your resume feel like it finally came from someone who knows what they're doing. Let your experiences and results speak for themselves. And that's what actually gets you through the front door. Now, if you actually want my resume template, I used to land six software engineer internships and multiple full-time jobs. I'll link it in the description. Now, on the other side, your resume isn't supposed to be humble but a lot of you write it like you're scared to take credit. You use words like assisted with or helped on. That's what I call a bystander bullet point. You were there, but were you actually building anything? Because builders don't say assisted. They say, I shipped X, I led Y, I improved Z. That's the difference that gives you interviews. Because listen, no one's sitting there trying to interpret your bullets and give you the benefit of the doubt. If you don't say it clearly and confidently, they assume it doesn't matter. Now, this isn't about lying. Don't ever lie. That won't take you anywhere. Instead, it's about owning your role and describing it like a builder, not a bystander. Because I've seen too many students sell themselves short, not because they lacked experience, but because they didn't know how to talk about it. Let me show you exactly what that looks like with a real example from Arav, who was a freshman that joined our program. On paper, Arav looked like a star. MIT, Langchain, a machine learning lab. When you read the bullets, total ghost town. The names were strong, the project sounded real, but the bullets, super passive and totally vague. Let's look at an example of these. Analyzing potential data leaks, writing a paper on model performance. Now, this is the kind of language that makes you sound like a bystander, not a builder. And that's the problem. When recruiters see those words, they don't picture someone driving results. Instead, they picture someone sitting in the corner, taking notes. But when we actually sat down and walked through what Arv really did, the story flipped. He wasn't just analyzing data, he was digging through 50 million tokens to uncover contamination in one of the world's biggest healthcare data sets. He wasn't just writing a paper, actually he published findings that helped boost LLM reasoning accuracy by over 10%. And he wasn't just using Langchain, he built a tool that auto-scripted context-aware videos in under 10 minutes with full AI voiceovers and visuals. That's not filler, that's real engineering work. But the recruiter never knew any of that because the bullets didn't say it. This is a concept I like to call the visibility gap. That's a space between what you actually did and what your resume makes people believe you did. And if you don't close that gap, you lose out. Not because you weren't qualified, but because you didn't communicate it. So what do we do to actually fix that? We rebuilt it line by line by line using the builder's resume framework. Number one, start with a strong verb. I'll put a ton on screen right now so you can see these. Any of these are good. Number two, add real numbers. Make the results stupidly obvious. After that, the recruiters weren't just noticing, they were reaching out. Don't be the guy who built Rome and wrote, I helped here and there with bricks. That's a trap. Now, when you hear me say that, you're probably thinking, but I'm not. What if I'm not 100% ready for the role yet? What if I get the interview and they think I'm better than I actually am? Cool, here's the thing. Nothing forces you to level up more than actually getting that message Hey, are you free to talk next week? That's pressure, the good kind of pressure. So yeah, if you're applying to a JavaScript heavy job and haven't touched JS in a while, just put it on your resume anyway. And if you get the interview, then spend a couple of days brushing up. Read through documentation, build a mini project. You don't need to be a senior developer by Monday. You just need to sound like someone who knows their stuff in the interview. That's not dishonest, that's how the game is played. Most people who get interviews, they're only 80% ready and they figure that last 20% on the go. So go bold, seriously. Frame your work like it matters because it really does. Okay, you finally did everything right. Solid layout, real numbers, and strong projects. What's your resume? Still sadly sitting there with no one reaching out. No interviews, no callbacks, just silence. Why? Because you send the same version to every job. And in 2025, that's a guaranteed way to get skipped. Here's why. When a recruiter reads your resume, they're subconsciously asking, does this reflect what we're looking for? And if the answer feels even slightly off, if it sounds generic, if it could be sent to 10 other companies, they move on instantly. It's like showing up to a date and talking about your ex the whole time. Nothing about it says, I care about this company. Now, I'm not saying you need to rewrite your resume every single time. That's overkill and a waste of time. But if you're applying to a backend role that's 90% Python and your bullets talk about HTML, Figma, and how you designed a logo, that's not targeting, that's misalignment. Let me tell you a quick story. One of our students was applying to infrastructure roles at AWS, but when we looked at his resume, half the bullets were about mobile UI and one literally said, collaborated with the team to brainstorm app layout using Figma. No mention of AWS, no backend, no signal that he understood the job. And that's the issue. If your resume talks about everything except what the company cares about, they assume you don't get it. So here's how we fixed it. He actually sent our team the job descriptions and highlighted all the tools, keywords and responsibilities that kept coming up. Then we went back into his resume and reworded the project that matched. We brought the backend bullets at the top and we helped him mention the AWS tools he'd actually used. No fluff, just better framing. Guess what happened one week later? He landed two interviews, one of them 
with the AWS Cloud Infra team that originally skipped him. That's how powerful it is when your resume feels like it was built for the job. And if you're thinking, well, that sounds like a lot of work. Well, it is. But that's the point. Most people don't do this. They send the same generic resume and hope it lands. But hope is in a strategy. And in this market, being generic is the fastest way to get rejected. Now in life, you can obviously do everything yourself, but if you want someone to actually go through your resume line by line by line, completely rewrite it from scratch and bring in a team of fang level recruiters at companies like Amazon and Bloomberg to review your resume unlimited times, check out the Software Engineering Accelerator. In just a couple weeks, we're gonna fully redo your resume, LinkedIn and start getting you interviews, even if you've not heard from any companies. We've had multiple students submit 200, 300, 1000 applications, join our program and in just three or four weeks, they land their first interview. Now, if your resume is amazing and you've landed OAs, but you fail all of them, check out this video right here about how to pass OAs using LeetCode. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next video.